Okay, well today is August uh, 14th. I'm still sitting in my van ready to go. If you've not seen my last video, uh, Lori, my wife, has COVID, so I've been delayed. Uh, I've been testing negative all along, but she was still positive as of yesterday. And also there's a challenging weather environment here in Northern California right now, kind of our California monsoon uh, season. But I uh, did tease in my last video that I'm going to be selling uh, my gear, but not all of it. Um, and I wanted to reach out to the community because you have a lot of experience and get some feedback uh, from you. In part of packing for this trip that I had hoped to make down to Landers, California, I decided just to take one mount. And then I took both telescopes, my Xenostar Z61 Mod 2, as well as my Celestron Edge 8 HD. And I said, okay, well, you know, I want to simplify things a little bit. I'll just work with one mount. And based upon the targets that are available in the weather, I'll switch between the telescopes, no big deal. So, okay, it sounds like a good plan, a little less to pack, uh, not as much to focus on when I get down and uh, start imaging. I'm working with one telescope at a time, uh, lets me go a little slower. So I thought, okay, that's good. But that really got me thinking, can I reduce my kit even further? And before we get into that, let me just uh, tell you, I'm still chasing the elongation on my Edge HD8, but I have ordered a couple of items. And one of the items I ordered was the Ocal Le Electronic Collimator Optical Access Calibrator. And I saw a video by Queeve, the Lazy Geek, he did it about a year ago. And I came away with the conclusion that this could be, uh, this could allow me to do a rough collimation. Since I travel with my Edge HD, it gets bounced around a little bit in the van, even though I've tried to cushion it the best I can. So good practice is going to be collimating it every time uh, I arrive at a new site. And I should probably check it along the course of nights, but I'll be happy just to get a good collimation in. I've not been real diligent on trying to resolve this issue that I have with my elongated stars. And um, that's another reason why I was thinking of, can I downsize some more? But anyway, I've ordered this to help as an aid for rough collimation. I also... <clears throat> saw a video I think by Eric Astro and about the tri botanoff mask for the Celestron uh, Edge HD8 and he showed how he is using it for collimation and then I flipped over to a video by, from Queeve the Lazy Geek who also I believe was using a tri botanoff mask so I said okay uh, let me get this and because uh, I really want to focus before I make any decisions to sell any of my gear. Uh, and you'll see why in a moment I need to resolve getting uh, rid of the elongated stars. I really need to understand that. And it was just the other day I was looking through some old files. And I guess the first light through my Edge HD8 was in September of last year. And still I've not gotten rid of those elongated stars. So... I really need to focus all my energy on getting rid of that. I believe I'm doing pretty good polar alignments. These tools, I think, will help me rough in and fine-tune collimation. And uh, then I'll chase it from there as far as any possible tilt or other issue that I might be dealing with. So, uh, and then uh, one more thing I'm thinking of ordering, and again, you can give me your feedback uh, Bob's knobs. You know, I working with the screwdriver with those little screws uh, that are in the secondary uh, mirror. Um, I'm afraid I'm going to ding up my glass, um, and uh, it's really kind of hard at night finding those little uh, heads on those screws with a small little Phillips screwdriver. 
So I'm considering Bob's knobs. I hear people say that they back off a lot. But if I'm going to be collimating a lot because I'm traveling, you know, if I have an easy two-step process for collimation when I get to the field, then maybe I can deal with the Bob's knobs. Clearly, I can see where trying to make the adjustments are a lot easier, especially in the dark. So if you have some feedback, leave me some comments on your experience uh, if you've used this, uh, these Bob's knobs. Uh, so now let's get into what I'm thinking, and this is where I really need your feedback. Again, uh, this is all predicated on me resolving my elongated stars with my Edge HD8, and you know I'll figure out if uh, if I have some tilt, I'll, I'll address that as well. But I'm thinking, um, you know, maybe I can eliminate my. Um, um, William Optics Xenostar uh, 61 Mod 2, you know, if I go with a Hyperstar. So what I've started to do is research on the Star Zona. Uh, where is that at? Uh, the Hyperstar 8 V4 for the Celestron Edge HD 8. So can I just work with one scope going forward, and that scope being my Edge, 8, uh, Edge HD8? With this uh, device, it will bring my uh, field of view, I think, down to uh, effectively 390 millimeters. I think that's what uh, I think that. Um, the, oh, the, it'll bring my focal length down to uh, 390 millimeters, where my Xenostar 61 is at 360. I really like that wide field uh, view. And sometimes I wish it was a little bit wider, you know, but it is what it is. So is this a solution for me, which will enable me to only have to travel with one telescope, my Edge HD 8, and then based upon what targets I want to do, just uh, install the Hyperstar if I'm doing some wild, wild, wide field imaging, and if I'm not, take it out. Um, so this is what I'm thinking, and it always comes down to funds, but I've made a list of what I'm willing to sell, and this top part here is my HEQ5 Pro mount. It's a good mount works extremely well with my Xenostar Z61. The payload is right for that mount. But I really don't want to take another tripod with me, another, you know, uh, mount head and everything, if I can avoid it. And my uh, Skywatcher EQ6R Pro, it's a great mount. And again, not only do I want to downsize on what I take with me on these trips, I also want to go a little bit slower. I don't really need to run two rigs at night capturing data. Uh, yeah, there's probably some advantages to doing it, but I'd like to go a little slower these days. So uh, here are the items that I'm uh, considering selling. And uh, then here are the uh, other items that I might sell as well based upon what solution I go with. because. In addition to the Starzona, I'm also looking at a possible replacement with better optics for the Xenostar 61. So if I go with something, uh, another refractor, then I would want to keep uh, this group of equipment down here. I'd want to keep the, uh, the uh, electronic filter wheel and the uh, EAF and uh, the ASI Air Plus. So uh, this is kind of my thoughts. You know, do I go with a refractor or having resolved my issue with elongated uh, stars, slightly elongated stars with my Edge HD8, do I then move into a uh, Starzona Hyperstar uh, solution to replace my Xenostar Z61 
and enable the Edge HD8 to do wide field imaging. So here's some of the costs that would be associated again for the uh, Hyperstar V4. Uh, then I would need a filter slider and then at a minimum I would need a set of uh, high speed uh, two inch uh, narrowband filters. Now you'll notice above the top here some trade-offs between the Hyperstar as I understand it and doing my research and that's why I have no sleep, no sleep, and some sleep. So in this solution I would just say okay I'm just gonna do you know like uh, emission nebula with a uh, Hyperstar so these are the minimum things that I would need here would be the cost. But then say I want to do RGB as well and right now all I have are two um, mono cameras and I don't think the ASI 294 MM Pro with its uniquenesses to have to take dark flats and everything would be a good solution to pair with the uh, Hyperstar but my 533 MM Pro uh, seems like that would work but then I could also possibly instead of purchasing this filter set just go back and buy an MC 533 or correction an ASI 533 MC Pro camera again one which I just recently sold a few months ago and get it again and then I would get some sleep on those nights when I would be doing uh, emission nebula I'd have to get up every so often to change the filter in the filter drawer uh, versus if I was shooting an RGB target with the uh, 533 MC Pro then I could uh, I could get some more uh, sleep. So these are some of my thoughts. Um, I looked at uh, there's the Hyperstar 8 V4 uh, price with the uh, filter uh, slider. Here are the uh, filters I would get uh, for narrowband. And again, I found some good articles on uh, cloudy nights around uh, what uh, should be the bandpass width of your narrowband filters when using Hyperstar. So if anybody has uh, some thoughts on that, let me know. Um, I think from what I'm getting so far, narrower, narrower is not necessarily better when you're dealing at uh, 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 F2. But again, I'm just on the front end of doing my research, so I have a lot to learn yet. Uh, here would be the uh, LRGB filter set and its cost. And then here's the cost of the uh, ASCAR FR, FRA 400. Um, and then I was just taking a look at what the uh, field of view would look like uh, with the um, Hyperstar. Uh, they have that option in here when you're looking at your uh, telescope in astronomy tools. And, you know, I could live with that. So, I just thought I'd come back uh, to the community here that's following me on uh, Astro Vagabond and, and give you some ideas of what I'm thinking about and uh, get your feedback. Again, I'm, I'm going to spend the next couple of months uh, really focused on understanding why I have that elongation, making sure I've got a good collimation process and some good tools to work with and uh, to resolve that issue. And then, you know, I'd really just like to start taking less with me and if I could expand the value that I'm getting from my Edge HD8 by adding a Hyperstar solution to it for wide field imaging and offset the cost of that purchase by selling my Xenostar and my HEQ5 and some of the associated equipment like the electronic uh, focuser and uh, filter wheel, uh, then that might be the right solution for me. But I'm on the very front end of understanding what life would be like with a Hyperstar on an Edge HD8. And uh, some of the threads I'm finding are from 
2015. I'm think some things have changed since then. Uh, but again, uh, the other uh, big thing that I've not done before that I'd have to uh, deal with is doing sky flats. I know many people do sky flats. They say it's a piece of cake. I've never tried it, so I'm going to start uh, trying to take some sky flats. Again, I'm using Nina with my uh, Edge HD8, so it has a facility for taking sky flats. So I'm going to give it a try. I know some people do it shortly after sunset. Other people do it in uh, the very first light of the morning, uh, right after sunrise. So I'll give that uh, a try and see what the flats wind up looking like. And um, again, if you're using a ASI 294 uh, MM or even MC Pro with a Hyperstar, I appreciate your thoughts on what that experience is like. And again, my understanding is with the 294, you don't want to take bias frames, you want to take flats and flat darks, and then the bias is included in the flat darks. So again, um, I'm just uh, on the front end. I always need something that drives me forward to, uh, you know, where I get a chance to explore something new. And I really just uh, thought, why not uh, consider these options? What I ultimately wind up doing, I'm sure I'm a few months away, but your feedback could really help me if you have that experience and share your thoughts. That's been helpful to me in the past, and I'd appreciate that now. So, okay, well, I'm kind of uh, stuck here in a sense. I have no problem caring for my wife. I'm not going to leave until she's totally uh, test a negative. Uh, I've been living in the van. I've been keeping my distance from her uh, so that she doesn't infect me. The van's worked out very good for that. Uh, but I like to sleep in my own bed. The van bed is comfortable, but nothing like my uh, bed in the house. And hopefully I can do that soon. And then every day I check the weather down in uh, GMARS and uh, Blue Canyon Airport. I'm willing to go to either site, but with this amount of moisture in the air in this what we call California monsoon season, it's uh, hard to get a reliable forecast that uh, where there's some clear nights. Even AccuWeather says clear, but then if you dig into it and you say overnight, it says 52% cloud. So I'm getting some conflicting signals there. So, all right, well, uh, probably gone on too long. If you like this kind of content, please give it a thumbs up. As always, like, share, and subscribe. Wherever you may be in the world, I wish you nothing but clear skies. Other than that, till next time.